So earlier this year when AMD launched the RX 6400 for a price a lot higher than what most people thought its gaming performance warranted, uh, you know, I, I, they got a lot of criticism. And I guess Nvidia was like, hold my beer. Because now we've got some actual benchmarks and reviews out for the GTX 1630. Now to be clear, this, we don't have all of the details. It doesn't look like there's an official MSRP coming out here. Although we do have pricing on several models. And the price is too high <laughs> given what we're getting for this, guys. So Tech Power Up got their hands on one of these. And it's looking like, uh, according to their reviews, we're seeing their, uh, they have the Gainward Ghost model uh, coming in with the RX 6400 from AMD having a 57% performance lead over the GTX 1630 at 1080p. Now, um, w w so there's different pricings out there. We have a Chinese retailer claiming their model is around 1,000 RMB, which would be around 150 US dollars. We see that EVGA has listed their SC model for $200. <laughs> $200. dollars for this i mean it's absolutely nuts now now what is this card supposed to be well inno 3d who is a uh, graphics card manufacturer uh, has actually posted their own benchmarks and what they're claiming is that this is basically a 1050 ti replacement so so this is a refresh of the 1050 ti at least according to this now, now what, what kind of graph is this ah, well, one thing that's a little bit annoying about it is that use, they're using dark gray with a little dashed outline on a dark gray matching background for one of their bars here. So that dark gray on gray is the GTX 1050 non-TI. The darker green is the GTX 1050 TI. And the lighter green here is the GTX 1630. And what they're trying to say here is that the GTX 1630 basically trades blows with the 1050 Ti. Uh, it does actually lose <laughs> in some of these, um, but then it does, uh, I guess, beat it occasionally as well. So it's it's right around there with the 1050 Ti and it does beat the, the 1050 non-Ti. Now we do see some other graphs here, again, showing uh, similar types of results and um, here's what I think the real difference is, and this is what they're trying to highlight. So uh, what are they trying to sell people on here? Well, it's like a 1050 Ti in gaming, but it has more encoders. So I guess, you know, so one of the big criticisms of the RX 6400, for example, was its lack of encoder abilities. And it looks like at least the 1630 doesn't run into that trap, where if you're looking at this compared to the 1050 Ti, we are actually supporting VP8, as well as H.265 codecs in 8-bit, 10-bit, and 12-bit of 444, rather than it looks like the 1050i Ti was limited to H.265 in a 420 um, uh, sampling there. So it, I guess it has something going for it, but need I remind you that the GTX 1050 Ti came out for $139 in 2016. In 2016, yes, six years ago. So we're offering basically the same performance six years later for more money with slightly better encoding abilities. This is disgusting. Now, again, we don't have an exact MSRP, but we are seeing uh, a colorful, uh, colorful model, there I can speak, at around 169 US dollars. Again, we've seen EVGA listing theirs for 199 US dollars. I don't know what to tell you guys, but this thing just doesn't look good. Is Nvidia trying to make the ARC A380 not look quite as bad? <laughs> like, <laughs> Is that what they're trying to do here? Uh, it seems kind of silly. Well, let's talk about AMD a little bit. How about we're seeing a whole bunch of articles uh, and tweets and whatnot pointing to uh, AMD having maybe their own version of tensor cores 
on their RDNA 3 graphics cards uh, by supporting wave matrix multiply accumulate instructions, uh, which should be able to do something similar to what NVIDIA does on their tensor cores. Um, and why would they want to do this? Well, the speculation seems to be that this could allow for a hardware accelerated FSR 3.0. Now let's be clear here, AMD has not come out and said they are making a hardware accelerated FSR 3.0. This is speculation. Okay, this is speculation. And what is this speculation based on? Well, like usual, we have a Digimon tweeting some things out about the new graphics cards. And he's saying AI Accelerate should work with FSR 3.0 and other features. So Greymon is, is you know one of those leakers out there who has a track record of getting some things right. So we do uh, listen to the Digimon about some things. Um, now that doesn't mean that this will be true. That's just where a lot of this is coming from. And it is posted on a, um, uh, oh, where was it? Are they not gonna quote it here? I don't know, I, I looked at several different articles about this, but the instruction set here d did come up in some little patch, uh, <laughs> uh, and then people are, are referencing it from there. So anyway, it would be very interesting to see if we got a hardware accelerated FSR 3.0 to compete more with DLSS. But what I really like about FSR 1.0 and 2.0 is that they don't require particular GPU brands and hardware acceleration. So if this did happen, I would like for it just to be maybe a way to speed up FSR 2.0, but it would still be supported hopefully on older GPUs. And what I'd really like to see from FSR uh, 2.0 is some uh, image quality improvements to get it, you know, it's close to DLSS, but not quite there yet. Um, especially if you look at Digital Foundry's uh, analysis in the God of War game, Kratos' beard could look a little bit more stable in motion. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, now I'm interested in a lot of these upcoming handhelds. I really like, I mean, this market was always there, but the Steam Deck seems to have really popularized it. And um, so I'm excited to see what kinds of uh, gaming uh, handheld computers we get coming up. And this one looked particularly interesting to me because this one will feature um, discrete GPUs, not integrated, okay? So it looks like there's gonna be an AMD version with a, with a, a Ryzen 6000 and Radeon 6000 discrete graphics, although they have not specified which one. And it looks like they're also going to feature Arc Alchemist GPUs from Intel. So they're going to have both an AMD and an Intel version here with discrete graphics. This is super interesting. You can also definitely see the Steam Deck inspired design here with these dual touch pads on both sides. So I'm wondering how that could play into, um, you know, games that have a Steam Deck, you know, control scheme. They're designed to run well on the Steam Deck and possibly using those touch pads on the Steam Deck. Perhaps this could um, get nice support from that. And so I, I really think, you know, if Steam Deck popularizes this ecosystem and these control scheme types on these handhelds, we could see other handheld manufacturers uh, taking advantage of this. Now, I would expect this to be very expensive, although this is, uh, doesn't have any kind of official uh, price announced yet. But anyway, we've got a whole bunch of handhelds coming out and already out. Uh, that look really exciting to me because I've been playing my Switch a bit, been traveling a little bit on the weekends this summer and such, and uh, I've been playing my Switch, and I, I really wish it had a nicer screen and better graphics, so, you know. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to get a Steam Deck. Actually, you know what we should talk about before I move on to the next thing? Let's talk about the Steam Deck. Um, so I should mention that the Steam Deck has had its SSDs downgraded in some newer 256 gigabyte and 512 gigabyte models, Specifically what's going on here is that the PCIe Gen 3x4 connection uh, looks like in some models is downloaded to a Gen 3x2 connection. 
on both the 512 gigabyte and the 256 gigabyte model. Now, Valve is claiming that they did not see any impact to gaming performance when doing this. Now, notice they're saying gaming performance. They didn't mention load times or anything like that. So I'm, I'm curious what exactly will happen here. I don't think it's gonna be a big deal, but it is something to, uh, to notice, take into account, uh, you know, uh, whenever specs get changed on a device that you may have already pre-ordered. Now, uh, we do have new AMD drivers out, and you might want to look at that, especially if you're interested in playing F1 2022, uh, because this looks like it's primarily the game-ready driver for that, although there are some uh, other fixes here, including some issues with Fortnite multi-threaded rendering, uh, um, getting uh, some improvements. So go ahead and take a look at those dra graphics drivers if you're interested. Speaking of graphics drivers, we have some new Intel Arc drivers. And in addition to being some of these like day one uh, uh, game support type drivers as well for uh, you know F1 2022 and some Monster, Hunt Monster Hunter Rise stuff, uh, they're also fixing some problems. Now, one of the things that they're, they're doing here is, as I've reported when we've seen benchmarks come out for the, uh, a, the Intel Arc GPUs, we usually see the 3D Mark performance way out of line with the actual gaming performance. And this is because Intel shipped um, heart, like, like, like op optimizations like benchmark specific optimizations for 3D Mark benchmarks, and this is against 3D Mark's rules, which is why uh, these benchmarks were listed as not approved. Now, Intel promised a long time ago that they would have a way to turn this off by April. Well, we're now at the very end of June, and it does look like they now have a toggle. Uh, to turn off the 3D Mark specific optimizations so you can get some actual approved benchmarks here, which will probably bring them more in line with what we're actually seeing in games. All right, let's hop into some other quick stories here. Tech Power Up is saying that they've noticed that Windows Defender can significantly impact Intel CPU performance and that they have a fix for it. Now, they're saying that the underlying issue that's costing so much performance, I think they're showing around 6% uh, in Cinebench, uh, which, it, which is interesting, um, that the underlying issue is that Windows Defender will randomly start using all seven hardware performance counters provided by Intel Core processors, which include three fixed function counters. And each of these counters can be programmed in one of four modes to configure at which privilege level it counts. Um, and since these counters are a shared resource, it is possible that multiple programs want to access these counters at the same time. And basically this causes some kinds of issues and they claim that they have a fix for it. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't dig further into the weeds here because I have an AMD CPU, so this is not affecting me. <laughs> but you might wanna click the link in my description if you're interested. Now we have Samsung announcing that they are beginning mass production of three nanometer GAA chips with up to 45% increased power efficiency and 23% higher performance and that they have a second gen variation also in the works. And this is leading to TSMC's, who is another uh, you know, chip foundry, uh, th their sh share prices dropping to a record low as uh, on that news that Samsung is taking a lead there in getting their three nanometer tech up and running. Now, um, Intel is getting a patent infringement case, at least it's coming to light now, uh, as a Japanese professor is suing Intel for products involving FPGAs and SOCs. I guess there is a uh, Japanese professor, Masahiro uh, Lida, is suing uh, Intel for patent infringement um, because I guess in 2001, uh, he was a doctoral student and found a way to manipulate uh, significant LUTs or lookup tables so that individual M input and N input LUTs work together to create a single LUT or a group of fractured LUTs. And I guess the idea here is that this um, has impacted the reduction of power consumption for chips and the diminished the implementation area. 
So this makes it a crucial part of Intel's designs. And I guess they did, uh, Intel did buy the company Altera for $16.7 billion, giving them access to this. Um, but I guess, you know, the times at which this was used could have been an issue. I'm not going to dig further into the weeds in this uh, video. Feel free to hop into that uh, in the description if you're interested further as well. Now, we're also seeing a company, DFC Intelligence, believing that gaming subscription services will push PC and console gaming to a record year. I thought it was interesting here to note um, that they're saying that the console gaming business is expected to see a third of its software and services revenue going to these subscription services uh, from Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo, including Game Pass, Switch Online, and PlayStation Plus. Um, so yeah, these subscription services seem to be quite a big deal. Now in cloud streaming services, we're seeing GeForce Now adding six new games and now available, uh, that the GeForce Now streaming is now available on Samsung Gaming Hub. And then we've also released their, uh, released their July games list. So the six new games are Alaloth, Discaea 6, Card Shark, Cartcraft, Hotline Miami, and NASCAR 21. And then um, we're seeing the uh, July games being listed here. And uh, again, we're seeing that it looks like Samsung Smart TVs through their Samsung Gaming Hub are now um, supporting GeForce Now streaming. So that's kind of interesting. If you're into cloud streaming, for me, it's just always had too much latency, but it might have to do with me living out in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, <laughs> I have a fast internet connection, but maybe there's not a server near me. I don't know. Um, now, this is interesting if you're on Linux and using RDNA graphics or uh, which is that um, Mesa's Rad V of Radeon Vulcan driver uh, continues to outperform the official AMD V Vulcan driver for RDNA 2, according to Pharonix here, who did a whole bunch of benchmarks showing that it was usually as good or better to use Mesa's Rad V. Uh, now, uh, MSI is introducing a combo strike feature on their AM4 500 series motherboards. Now, what is this? Apparently this is for the 5800X3D CPU and offers increased performance. Uh, so yeah, Combo Strike, what's this? Well, I guess you can find it now in your MSI BIOS, but what is it? <laughs> well, according to this article, it says that the, uh, it looks like it's um, MSI unlocking a higher power limit for the Ryzen 7 5500X3D uh, since they said that the performance gain could depend on the cooling solution used and they're saying that they could see a performance uplift, uplift of up to 5%. So interesting if you have a MSI board and a 5800X3D. A uh, couple quick things here at the end. Monster Hunter Rise is seeing DLSS support added. Um, along with its uh, su um, Sunbreak expansion and all of that. And then Sony is now getting back into the uh, PC gaming peripheral market with their in-zone branding. And they're coming out with an M9 monitor with 4K 144 hertz display around 900 US dollars, as well as some headsets and things. I believe Hardware Unboxed already got their hands on one of these for review and thought that it looked pretty good. So I, I'm, I'm all in for some more support. I think one of the biggest things on this is that at this price point, it's unusual to get full array local dimming for the HDR. Um, but they actually do have it, although not with like, you know, thousands of zones or anything like that. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.